Mr. Norm's 1968 Dodge Dart, coming up next on the Monster Hobbies Garage. Hello once again, model car builders. Welcome back to another Old Box Review as we get to take a look at Ravel's 1968 Mr. Norm's Dodge Dart. Now, this is a cool old kit, and I have seen this pop out again every now and again from Ravel. It's a great one. So, without further ado, uh, let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. Now we flip the clocks all the way back to 1968 with a little subcompact Dodge we like to call the Dodge Dart. This particular kit is a Revell Mr. Norm 68 Dodge Dart, so right away you know there's some excitement under the hood that is not normal to the other typical Dodge Darts of the time. That would be an amazing 440 cubic inch four barrel giant engine. All right, so taking a look at this box, this model kit again came out in 2000 by Ravel Monogram. Another great time when Ravel was competing with Tamiya of Japan, Lindbergh, AMT, and Monogram for the best detailed model kits in the world. And I don't think they failed here. The only thing that they failed on is actually the construction of the box, which we'll get into in a minute. So if we tilt this up on this side, we get a little bit of a write-up and the noise of all the parts shifting. <laughs> okay, so we got our length at 8 inches, 117 pieces, molded in white, decals are silk screen water slide. They said it couldn't be done, but that never stopped Mr. Norm and his grand Spalding team from creating some of the fastest cars of the 1960s and 70s. Even Chrysler Engineering couldn't fit a 440 cubic inch engine into the darts, into Dodge's compact dart. But even if it meant putting the battery in the trunk, Mr. Norm was determined to make it work. Because normally these Dodge Darts came with six cylinder, the slant six cylinder Dodge engine, Chrysler engine. So here in this little panel, they give you, of course, all the paint colors aluminum, chrome silver, Chrysler engine red, flat black, flat white, gloss black, gloss green, gold, satin black, steel, tan, transparent red, and turn signal amber. Exciting times. The side of the box looks like the top of the box. Ugh. And then, and now they're shifting the other way. Okay, here we've got our little chart saying that this is a skill level 2 kit for ages 10 and up, requires glue and a paintbrush, not included. And then here we get some of the model kit details, so let's just bring the camera in. You can see that amazing 440 cubic inch engine. Mr. Norm did shove this thing in nice and tight. This is almost like the uh, Ford Thunderbolt, which we reviewed earlier, as far as jamming big engines into small engine bays. And then there's the back with that concave um, rear window. So very typical of the Dodge Darts. In fact, one of my uh, friends in the neighborhood back in the 80s, his mom had a Dodge Dart, and I knew another one, two that had a red one. <laughs> All the spills and chills of model building. Okay, so here we go. Now, the part that I hate about these kits is, of course, this. The hinged flip-up box lid that Ravel was using back in the day. I really hate these. And I'll show you why in just a second here. And here we have a 68 Mr. Norm Dodge Dart model kit. This box got a little bit damp. <laughs> and this is why I hate the flip up top. Because, as you can see, this thing just explodes open. Uh, you can't do much with it. It's got these little hook tabs here that are supposed to slot into the sides here. And whenever you flip this thing open, they want to tend to pop apart. And I do not like these boxes. I'd rather have the typical lift up top style. So I'll clear this mess out of the way and we'll get back to looking at what's in the box. Okay, so getting back to the fresh box here. All right, I open it up and inside you see the instruction sheet. And the decal sheet is inside.
Oh, that's the other part about these flip boxes. If you, you have parts that are loose, they can fall out through the sides. Anyway, there's the, uh, the body. You've got the interior and the interior component, the under frame. And we've got the glass, exhaust pipes, our first parts tree there, more parts trees, <laughs> the hood, the side panels for the interior, which again are molded separate. I must have been working on this a little bit. There's uh, suspension components, the chrome, and then some more parts. Yep, somebody's been working on the model. <laughs> yeah, just some runners in here left behind. So okay, we will take all this out of the box, but next let's go to our instruction sheet. Here we have the instruction sheet for Mr. Norm's 1968 Dodge Dart with a nice write-up on Mr. Norm's Grand Spalding Dodge located on Grand Avenue in Chicago, Illinois and it was the epicenter of Mopar for performance in the late 60s and early 70s and one of the most famous high-performance auto dealerships in the country. So it gives you quite a lot of uh, write-up on him and what he did for this car. And then we also get our paint call-out sheet here, which is pretty good. And the old phone number, which I don't know if that's still valid. Okay, as we open it up, we get again some very big panels, which is nice. So that I can see them as I read this out. So here's our 440 Chrysler engine. You paint it Chrysler engine red. We do have an automatic transmission in here, which is interesting. The oil pan the front engine cover, the cylinder heads and the chrome valve covers, as well as a intake manifold and a chrome carburetor. Very nice stuff. Then we have our air cleaner, which has a decal going on it on the top as well as the front here, it looks like. The, the uh, coil, the distributor, the right and left exhaust manifolds, our starter motor, the alternator, two-piece alternator, and uh, brackets, of course the Chrysler Crico alternator, the belts and pulleys, and the fan. And then getting into panel two here, you can see that our body is going together almost right away. So we've got our glass going in, our mirror, the visors which are separate, the dome light again, and a rear window as well as a firewall, master cylinder, wind chill wiper motor, and the pedals. Then we got our master cylinder, top and bottom, which is showing it going in there. Then a car support for the radiator and the radiator shroud with the horn up front, going into the body. We have our interior with the separate side door panels, and the center column with the gear shift lever. And then down here, we have the front and back of the seats, the steering wheel, steering column, there's a tack on right that goes on, and a dashboard with the separate dashboard top, all going into this nice interior. And then over here we have our chassis assembly. So the battery and uh, the washer bottle as well as the interior completed going onto the chassis with the motor. And then we also have a steering box, heater hoses, and lower radiator hoses and a heater hose, I should say, exhaust system going in here. Then getting into the back here, we have our suspension going together with, of course, the torsion bar front suspension, the stabilizer bar, our wheels, then they're showing how the wheels go on with the rear axle with the leaf springs, differential, the drive shaft, and our shock absorbers, as well as the rear end assembly with the rear bumper going on. There's upper tail lights and lower tail lights, license plate, and then a rear chrome trim section, which go across here. Actually, it's plastic, gloss black. Plastic, gloss black. Earl Grey, hot. Anyway. <laughs> okay. 
Then here we have our front end assembly, the hood going on with chrome hood trim all around, hood hinges, uh, the grill, the headlights, turn signal lights, the front bumper and license plate shrouds, as well as the striker plate for the hood catch. And then we have windshield wipers and chrome side mirrors, which are really nice. Some more decals going on. And then on the final page, we have the wonderful stripes for Dodge Dart. So now we have the wonderful looking body of this model kit. And for a compact car, it is very beautifully done. It does have the vinyl top. You can hear the texture molded in. Now, Chrysler had some really cool looking vinyl tops back in 1968. There was a flower power one. I'll see if I can try to find a photograph of it and insert it right here. All right, so looking at that, you can see that that would be nice if they made a decal of that. But anyway, uh, standard vinyl tops, usually in black and white. You can see the nice convex windshield in here. Um, and then, what else? We've got our vent here. And uh, there's a section here to remove, so let's bring this up to the camera. You can see some pretty cool stuff going on in here. You, of course, have your Dodge Dart logos in there. And uh, there's that gas cap on the side, sort of the racing style. Up underneath, we do have the roof ribs as well as a sunken here for the glass. So the glass will come up tight, just like a pair of glasses. And then we do have some mold marks in here. Remember that the center one is not a mold mark. That's actually where that dome light is gonna go. So again, very nice. Uh, really hollow in the back here. There's again the uh, Dodge Dart lettering. And uh, Again, quite nice. The darts actually had a long lifespan in the Chrysler Corporation. I do believe they go up to about 1976, if my memory serves right. They were also available in four doors. So anyway, here we have a uh, two-door. So let's take a look at the rest of the plastic components. Now supporting all this power is, of course, our Chrysler Unibody-type subframe deal where of course we have the rear and front subframes coming out into the rocker panels for added strength. There is of course the uh, Revell tag in here. This is copyright Revell, which you can remove. But again, look at the nice crisp detail going on with all this. We got, we got our bumper horns going on. This of course is the time before impact bumpers which would be starting to make the scene in 1973. But again, nice detail, nice and crisp. Very good for Ravel of the era. Oops, I do see some sink marks in here, which would need to be filled in. Can the camera catch it? Not sure. Anyway, there again is a manufacturer mark underneath, but not really much on the sink mark scene. Just maybe a few things you might want to check to see if they interfere. If not, don't bother scraping them off. Anyway, there's our chassis. All right, here I actually have two parts trees side by side. It's only because I think someone was working on this kit. Now, my wife and I both have one of these, so I don't know who, who was doing what. It's been a while. Uh, but anyway, I thought I'd show the two trees together just because of the parts that were removed. So here we have our rear differential and the springs, our front uh, suspension with our torsion bars. There's a distributor there. Here we've got our exhaust pipes and the manifolds for them. There's the hood, the coil, the steering column, the steering wheel, the air cleaner, the fan, the top of the dashboard, heater hoses, starter motor, I believe, the little black piece of trim that's supposed to go in the hood, or the, the rear. Then radiator hoses, not sure what those two are. And our drive shaft in there, of course, is our hood. Now, because the hood is actually off the body, I can move these out of the way for a minute. 
and show you the fit and finish of the hood. And again, very nice. Should be no gaps once you get it all together. And again, very beautiful. You can see those little side scoops going on there. Can't quite remember what the Dodge Dart hood looks like in stock formation. Maybe it's the same. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. And then just looking at the hood, you've got underneath the fireproof matting. And unfortunately, there are quite a few mold marks on there, which you'll have to get rid of again with your number 16 hobby blade. So let's carry on with a few more components. All right, so now we have the under hood components as well as our sun visors. And then a bunch of the um, suspension components, the steering box, the hood hinges, and there's our automatic pedals. It's gas and automatic there, transmission or brake, and the gas pedal. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, so again, nice crisp detail. Let's just bring this up to the camera because I did sort of forget to do that with the last parts. You can see the nice uh, detail on our firewall. There is the mold marks in there, which of course you'll have to get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade. Turning the battery back over, you can see the nice Mopar detail on there. The front brace, the sun visors are very nice. They even have the uh, seam going around them, seam line. There's of course brackets and braces, and uh, shock absorbers in there. The radiator, nice detail work. Very beautiful, beautiful stuff by Ravel. And then looking up at the steering box and column, you can see again, quite nice. So very beautiful stuff. Now we can take a look at the interior components. And here we have our interior components. And once again, nice crisp detail. It's got the separately molded side door panels, which are always nice because, of course, you get the great detail. The window winders look like real window winders. And uh, the armrests are nice and crisp and clean. Then, of course, we have our detail on the seats, fronts and backs, the dashboard here, and our entire floor pan rear seat assembly with that uh, convex or concave uh, uh, rear package shelf, which is always quite nice. So let's take a look at these components individually, just by bringing them up into the camera. So there's our floor pan assembly, and as you can see, you got the nice rubber mat to protect from putting your feet through the carpet in that spot, because your feet are doing a lot of action hitting brakes and gas pedals. Then we've got those nice vents across the back here. They may have even been speaker covers, can't quite remember. But uh, no, they'd be for the rear windows. You look at the nice detail on that seat. Of course, all the little divots and stuff in there. So now speaking of the seats, there's our front seats. Looking much like the rear seat panel. And of course, the seat fronts need seat backs. And there they are, nice depressions in there. Here's our door panel. I'll just show you the one side. You can see the nice ribs in there and everything. The uh, wonderful door window winders and door latches, plus the armrests. So again, nice work by Ravel. And last on our interior components for this section, we have our dashboard. You can see the nice speedometer, the instrument panels, and the little AM radio down below, as well as the glove box. The only thing it needs is the top, which is separate, but that's always nice because this helps you in your painting of the dashboard. And here we have our engine components, which of course have all been removed from the parts tree because someone was working on them. You can see our massive 440 cubic inch motor with the long-tailed automatic transmission from Chrysler. The cool part about this is you get an oil pan as well as a transmission cover, pan cover. And then uh, there's our cylinder heads 
and our front water pump pulley assembly with the oil filter right here and the fuel pump there. Then our pulleys and the intake manifold. Next up we have our wheels and tires. These are Goodyear Polyglass GT tires, which I do believe were new for this kit. And uh, there's our wheel backs there. And of course our hubcaps. Now because someone was working on this kit, they were all separated, so I'm doing this a little out of sequence. But as you can see, the detail on the hubcaps is quite nice. Looks like the real thing, only smaller, as they would say. They do fit nicely into the wheels, the rubber tires, with a bit of pressure, <laughs> which I'm not going to try to do right now. Anyway, you'll need to put them in your tire's wheel spinner, but you do have some nice tread pattern on them. And of course the raised letters, which are a little bit not so thick, but probably more prototypical. And then of course our wheel backs here which are smooth. They don't have any uh, brake drum detail or anything like that. It is possible this could have drum brakes up in the front of the car, sort of like my 72 Oldsmobile did. But anyway, there's our wheels, tires, and hubcaps. And here we have our glass windows, which, with of course the concave rear window. And then we got our two headlights, seven inch, I believe. And remember, it's got that pattern on there, so make sure you've got them horizontal and vertical and not at an angle. The water bottles there, plus some of the um, little lights in the front. <laughs> our front windshield, and then our side rear windows and the no drafts, as well as our little four red taillights. And be careful when you clip these off that you don't shoot them across the room, because they are small. So just bring this up to the lens here. So you can see the great, cool uh, water bottle and all the rest. It's very nice detail there. And of course, these are just little red lines. So hard to believe that those would be your turn signals back then. But of course, on the real car, they'd be quite bigger. Next up, we have my favorite part of the parts tree, which of course is our chrome. So as you can see, this would be the spot where those wheels were. But uh, there's our front grille with the little turn signal lamps in there, our big 7-inch headlights. The rear bumper, uh, sorry, the front bumper. Here's the rear bumper with a nice Dodge lettering in there. You will have to paint, I do believe you paint black in between each of those grooves, so that's going to be a trick. There's our center console, the top, the mirrors, the valve covers, and a bunch of detail. Kind of hard to tell from where I'm standing here. There's the windshield wiper blades, license plates. Let's just bring this up to the camera here. See the nice grill detail. Of course, you're going to need your uh, Nuln oil. On the back here, you'd use more of a solid flat black. It's not really a wash. But you got the nice Dodge raised lettering in the center there. Ah, here we go. There's the alternator right in here. And Okay, so we've got the front of the alternator, the bracket, the back of the alternator, and our carburetor. Then uh, we got, oh, door latch handles, a mirror. Uh, not sure what that is. But anyway, let's turn this thing over, see if there's any detail. Nope, nothing too exciting on this side. So again, nice chrome, nice detail work from Ravel. Last but not least, we have our decal sheet, and all the license plates here are Illinois, with the exception of this historic vehicle one, which is from Kentucky. And the neat thing is they actually give you a decal, which is a license plate frame, which you can put over top of the license plates on the car. So what do we have here? We have an old AY5863 license plate, a red one. Um, if anybody's watching this from Illinois and you know your history of your license plates, you could leave the uh, years of these in the comments section down below. Then here we've got a yellow one, which is LK1823. Why the difference between red and yellow, I'm not sure. Let us know again in the comments down below. And then we've got a more modern Mr. Norm Illinois license plate sitting here. But this one is kind of cool, the Kentucky historical vehicle one. 
because this is generic, just BO40, you can actually put this on any of your historic vintage model kits that you want, like even a Model T. I'll allow it to go on a Model T. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's our 440 Magnum um, air cleaner decal, as well as a little underhood decal. These ones are for the hubcaps. Then you can put on the red line tires if you like. You got your choice of black, white, and red striping. And then here's all the Mr. Norm decals that would be on there. Our instrument panel and a bunch of other little gauges. And then we have the GSS decals, which would go on the car. And then our Chrysler Pentagram, or little TriStar here. So again, very cool decal sheet. A joy to place on your model. And that completes our look at the Revell Mr. Norm's 1968 Dodge Dart. Now, how many of you out there have actually built this model kit? What were your impressions of it? And all of that great stuff. Let us know in the comments down below. And if you have photographs of this, of your model, you can post them on our Facebook page. Well, I hope you enjoyed this great review of the Revell 1968 Mr. Norm's Dodge Dart. And if you love these great videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share them with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are one of the first ones to see it. And if you want to see our available current model car kits, don't forget to check them out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I'll leave the link down below in the description so you can click on there and go directly to our model car section. And until next time, everybody, Happy model building.